Ned? Ned Madstone? Rufus leapt up from the sofa. Jesus, it is. It's you. I don't fucking believe it. But somehow I don't think it can be done, can it? I know a little about physics and a little about technology. Something tells me that a time machine is wholly beyond your powers to invent. Christ, man, where have you been? What happened to you? Get away from me. Cotter took a step backwards as Rufus once more clawed desperately at his jacket. How dare you even think of touching me? This is a, this is a joke, right? You're, you're winding me up. It's your idea of revenge to get me shit scared. Fucking hell, man. You'll find out about shit scared, said Cotter. You'll discover that it's more than a phrase. You'll find out, too, that there's something worse than fear. Something called dread. <laughs> you're not serious. Rufus almost laughed at the look on Cotter's face. I mean, come on, we were kids. We didn't know what we were doing anyway. You were kidnapped. It was, it was all in the papers. That was nothing to do with us. Jesus, man. My father died. My father. He clung on for six months, unable to speak or move. He died in an agony of fear and guilt, believing that his only son had been kidnapped and killed because of him and his work. An honourable, decent man who gave everything he had to his country. A man incomparably above you in quality and greatness. He died because of what you and your friends did to me. Rufus looked round in terror at the sound of car brakes squealing in the street below. Cotter moved towards the door and replaced his sunglasses. "'I just want you to think of me as they start work on you. I want you to think of a frightened and bewildered child who had everything taken away from him because of your spite and envy.' Rufus had scrambled behind the armchair and stood now in the middle of the floor, clutching his money. "'They know about the fire escape,' said Cotter. "'They are certain to have it covered.' "'Ned!' screamed Rufus. Cotter let himself out of the door. Madstone! Cotter went quickly up one flight of stairs and looked down the stairwell as three men came running up to the second floor. He saw a flash of bright silver as one of them transferred a gleaming metal knife from one hand to the other. Inside the flat he heard Rufus still screaming his name over and over again. The door slammed shut and all screaming stopped. Five minutes later, the door to the flat opened and the three men emerged, one carrying a black bin liner. They said nothing as they descended the staircase. Simon waited for the sound of their car being driven away before he crept down and entered the flat. Rufus was lying on the floor in a spreading pool of blood that had already reached the extreme edges of the carpet. On the coffee table, ten feet away from him, his legs had been neatly laid, one beside the other, like bouquets recently delivered by a florist. "'Dear me,' said Simon. "'Legless again, Rufus.' Rufus stared up at him. "'Fuck you,' he hissed. "'Fuck you to hell.' Simon looked down and shook his head. "'Phew!' he said with distaste. "'I was right, wasn't I? Now you do know the meaning of shit scared.' I pity the person who finds you. Let's see, your cleaner comes on Monday, I believe. Maybe I should spare her sensibilities and warn the police. An anonymous tip-off, perhaps. You're an expert in those, aren't you? As a matter of fact, you're very lucky, do you know that? They say that it's quite pleasant to bleed to death. I dare say you won't be feeling much pain. The effects of shock can be merciful. Not a word I have much use for, of course. As he left, Rufus shouted after him. His voice came out huskily, and over the next hour, as the life flowed out of him, he tried to console himself with the thought that Simon must have heard every word. "'I was right about you from the first, Ned fucking Madstone,' he had called after him. "'You were always an arrogant fucker. I saw through you from the very beginning. Fuck you, Ned. Fuck you. You deserved it. Whatever it was, you deserved it!' Simon flicked out the latch and closed the door, leaning against it until the lock snicked home. Rufus's words had not, in fact, penetrated the hammering in his own ears. He went slowly downstairs and out into the cold air. Ned, trembling with exhilaration, looked up at the night sky. The stars winked down at him. Four, he whispered, and winked back. <laughs>